And Ms. Lubican Massimo, uh, you're recognized for five minutes. Thank you. Good morning, Chair and Committee. My name is Melina Lubokan Massimo. I come from Northern Alberta, Canada. I am a member of the Lubokan Cree First Nation, which is one of the many communities impacted by tar sands development. For, us, for those of us in Canada who are experiencing the detrimental effects of tar sands, it is encouraging to see that many decision makers and citizens in the United States are beginning to ask questions around whether or not the tar sands are in the right direction in which we should be pursuing in an already carbon constrained world. In the past five years, I have worked in communities throughout Alberta and British Columbia that are very concerned about the approval of tar sands pipelines, not only because of potential spills, but also because it will increase pressure to, for more tar sands expansion in Alberta. I personally have felt the impacts of both pipeline spills and tar sands driven industrialization of the landscape in the north. Last spring, I returned home where I was born to witness the aftermath of one of the largest spills in Alberta's history which was 50% larger than the oil spill in the Kalamazoo River in Michigan. What I saw was a landscape forever changed where my family went fished, hunted and trapped for generations. Days before the federal or provincial gov ed government admitted that this had happened, my family was sending me messages telling me of headaches, burning eyes, nausea and dizziness, asking me if I could find out more information as to if it was an oil spill and how big it might be. This is, was one of the saddest and most frustrating points because my family was not the first nor the last to experience these effects. It was alarming to hear that the first phase of the Keystone had already leaked and spilled 14 different times in its first 12 months of operation. Where I come from, billions of dollars are taken out of our traditional territories, yet till this day my family still has no running water. The indigenous communities have lived in these regions for thousands of years and yet are being pushed out unable to access their traditional territories and unable to practice their treaty rights due to tar sands expansion. This is a violation of our constitutionally protected rights under Section 35 of the Canadian Constitution. Communities like Fort Mackay, First Nation, can no longer drink, from, drink the water from their taps, and their children are developing skin rashes from bathing in this contaminated water. A cancer study done by Alberta Health Services revealed that there was a 30% increase in the community downstream of Fort Chippewan. Leukemias and lymphomas were increased by threefold, and bile duct cancers increased by sevenfold. Almost all of the cancer types were elevated, that were elevated were linked to scientifically, scientifically um, in scientific literature, to chemicals in oil or tar. We have toxic tailing ponds sitting in the north of Alberta that span over 170 square kilometers, which is equivalent to 42,000 acres. This is, the real, this is the reality in Canada, and more specifically, in Alberta, we have a lax and failing environmental monitor system, which has little to no enforcement when it comes to the tar sands. There have been thousands of alleged contraventions, notifications, and releases with little to no evidence of enforcement, as seen in a database that from Alberta Environment Documents, which details incidences of license and unlicensed discharges, discharges of pollutants, tailing leaks, chronic acute pollution incidents, habitat destruction, failure and failure by industry to maintain monitoring equipment, pollution and um, government documentation of reclamation and chronic lack of enforcement. We have endured decades of promises that have taught us that promises of new technologies um, that will repair this damage are, feel like empty words. The reality is that SAG-D solutions um, usually move the problem elsewhere, such as pumping the toxic byproduct underground um, where they can leak into aquifers rather than storing them in tailing ponds from the mines. Meanwhile, the scale of production is increasing and the overall problems are getting worse. We have, seen the, we have not yet seen a cumulative environmental assessment overall in the tar sands, but, and so companies will, and the government is, is therefore passing these projects um, without this cumulative environmental assessment. Companies will leave irre irre irreparable damage to our lands and our homes, and the Alberta government claims to reclaim the land. However, many prominent scientists dispute that this is possible. Just last week, a report was published in the Proceedings of the National Academy of the Sciences of the United States of America, stating any suggestion that oil sands reclamation will put things back to the way they were is greenwashing. First Nations in British Columbia are also adamant that, their, that the Enbridge pipeline will not be built through their territories. Over 100 First Nations have signed on to this declaration to oppose the construction of the Enbridge pipeline, 
and its associated super tankers on the west coast of Canada, and First Nations are willing to pursue litigation if the Enbridge pipeline is approved in Canada as they have constitutionally protected rights under section, thir section 35 of the Canadian Constitution. If constructed, the Keystone XL would deepen our mutual addiction to dirty oil and enable the ongoing expansion of the tar sands at the expense of communities as well as as well as at the expense of advancing cleaner energy alternatives. You have a choice in the direction we are taking in the world. You have the opportunity to become the world, the world leaders in clean renewable energy solutions that meet our energy needs without undermining or sacrificing the health of our communities and ecosystems. Hi, hi, thank you very much. Thank you very much and thank all of you for your thoughtful testimony.